Business Brain, episode 456 for Casual Friday, June 9th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take all kinds of things in our lives and we funnel them through the filter that we call our business brain to give us maybe a different slash better perspective that allows us to keep living our charmed lives. Sponsors that can help you keep living your charmed lives include notion.com slash business brain, where you can try notion projects for free and checker.com slash business brain, where you get 40 bucks off your first background check. We'll talk more in depth about those in a minute for now on casual Friday. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean, still out here in Lafayette, California, living the the dream. Living the dream. life that we always talk about. Absolutely. Hey, so on Monday of this week, you know, my my other, the other half of my life, or I don't know, another portion of my life has been following and and working with people using Apple uh, computer devices and, and iPhones and such for decades. And on Monday... Apple announced all kinds of stuff, as we referenced in the last show. They re- they they released a, a new MacBook Air, and that might be the one that a uh, winner gets for emailing feedback at businessbrain.show. But they also announced this headset called yeah. the Apple Vision Pro. Spatial computer. Well, that's the term. And I like, yeah. I what I noticed was, and I could be wrong about this, but certainly they did not lean in at all to the term the word reality. There was no augmented reality, no virtual reality. The first time I heard reality mentioned by someone from Apple on Monday was in what I call the second keynote, which is the Apple state of the union, which is the, or the platform state of the union. This is like the keynote for developers. They talk all about the nerdy stuff, you, you know, and oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like how do you program for this thing or what, how do you make your new widgets and iOS, you know, responsive and interactive? Because you, you've got to code that up. That doesn't just happen magically. And so they show you all this stuff in the in the State of the Union, in the platform State of the Union. And when they were talking about Vision OS, which is the operating system that this new headset runs, they mentioned Reality Kit, which is a framework that Apple has built uh, that it has been in use for a while, but now it can be adapted to this thing. But that, to me, that was the first time they really talked about the the word reality. And I liked that because to to me, what is that sound, Shannon? Shannon? I don't know. It's a good question. Oh, there we go. Got is it. That coming from your end? Track? Yeah, it was. It was from my end. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just checking. Apologies. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> all right. I, you know, the first time it happened, I just figured, oh, I'll let that go. And then when it became a habitual, I figured we needed. <laughs> is there something we need to talk? We about? needed to have a talk. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Uh, But, you know, they talked about spatial computing and certainly the way they discussed it and the way the 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 presentation went and even the demos that folks who were out there got to, you know, got to have some hands on or eyes on heads on time uh, shared is that it really becomes the best way I can I can convey this. And for thirty five hundred bucks or thirty six hundred bucks, this is this is not the right way to communicate this. But this is your external monitor, right? You put this headset on and now not only can you have one external monitor, you can have six external monitors, right? You can see all kinds of things going on. But think about this in your home office or think about this in your not even cubicle in in your, you know, open floor plan office environment where you want to have, you know, three or four screens sometimes at your desk or in a hotel room, you're traveling, but you want to, I've talked about how valuable it is to me to bring a, you know, a, a portable screen with me. Now, granted that portable screen costs about a hundred bucks, but you know, yeah. it, like, I, like the idea of having this workspace available, I really, I see that as a huge percentage of the the focus and target for this thing. And the way they did it, the way they showed it to us, that like that's the thing I took away is like, oh, wait a minute. You know, you could have at the moment you would have your laptop or your iPad or something, maybe even a keyboard with it. Right. If because typing is a thing, yeah. you know, 
and a, and a mouse, and they said it works with a keyboard mouse, and it also works with game controllers. So, I, you know, I get that too. But again, the same thing with games. Imagine having a huge screen that you can travel with and use on an airplane, right? Yeah, like the, the, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot of really interesting things, and from a from a business owner perspective, one of the things that we're constrained with on like our website and like we have all this product information and then we have reviews and we have tutorials and, and demonstrations and, and this kind of thing. But think about losing the barriers of that 2D environment yeah. to where someone could go into a product you're selling or a service that you're offering and all of a sudden multiple screens can pop up where they can just, you know, by having their eyes tracked, look and see, let me see the reviews. Let me read about the product description. Let me see the tutorial. And I mean, everything is presented in a very uh, much, you know, less linear fashion where they're having yeah. to scroll up and down a web page. It's presented to you because there is no limit to how the screen works. And, right? I, and, I, and right now, what you and I are doing is what, what classically happens. We are taking our current environments... Yeah. And adapting them, adapting them into this world that that a, a headset like this could offer. What we know from you know being too old and following technology for a very long time is that so many of the things that people will be able to do with this thing are things you and I have yet to conceive because we, yeah, don't, we don't have even this know. thing. That's right. My yes. favorite example is. Remember the day that the first person who came to you and said, hey, you need a cable modem. You had your dial up to AOL. It did everything you needed, right? You got your email. You could check your, you know, uh, you know, the buy sell stuff on the AOL, you know, me message boards or whatever it was. You could join the chat rooms and everything that you needed to do, you could do over dial up. And there was no reason in your current world that you needed a broadband connection, right? You did not right. need this That's right. huge step up in speed. It was like, ah, oh, that seems crazy. Imagine going back to dial up today. Think about all the things that you currently do that you could not do with dial up. Now, I'm not saying you specifically out there are yes. the one that said I would, you know, resist broadband, but think about all the things that broadband opened up that we didn't even think about. Like probably if you were forward thinking, you would have thought, wow, well, I, I could do video conferencing. You know, that would be amazing. You know, and, and now right. we do it just like willy nilly. It's no big deal. But did you think, oh, I can replace my, you know, cable TV with just streaming services. I didn't think of that. You might have, but you probably didn't. You know, and if you did, you were in the minority. So there's all kinds of use cases for a thing like this that works well, and that, that's an important distinction because there are things like this, and Apple's thing is probably going to be one that works well because they wouldn't release a product that didn't. It's just the way Apple is. They kind of wait. They aren't the first to market with something, but they often are the best to market or the first best. You know, think about the smartphone, right? They certainly weren't the yeah. first with a smartphone, but the iPhone redefined what a smartphone was. And now yeah, everybody just copies a few it. Key, yeah. yeah, with just a few key things, even though yeah. underpowered and yeah. limited. But over time, as that evolved, it 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 changed our entire world. And and I I do think this type of device, uh, as they as it evolves, it it will dramatically change and uh, bring new opportunities for people like us, entrepreneurs, uh, you know that kind of thing. I think it's going to be terrific. All right. So look, here on Business Brain, we know that project management tools are supposed to help us move faster and stay organized. But if you're still jumping between 50 different tabs just to do your job, then maybe you haven't found the right tool yet. But we have. That's where Notion comes in. Notion allows you to pull everything together into one place, tracking tasks, deadlines, managing sprints, organizing launches. And today I'm excited to share that they just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, your knowledge base, and AI so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. In just one workspace, you can do everything you need to get your projects over the 
finish line from brainstorming to drafting launch plans to organizing sprints and keeping everyone on deadline. And Notion's super customizable too. You can view projects any way you like. There's also powerful filtering and even automation features so you can work the way you want. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at Notion.com slash business brain. That's all lowercase letters, Notion.com slash business brain. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. Go right now to Notion.com slash business brain. And our thanks to Notion Projects for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you know that I've talked about how one of my favorite litmus tests before I offer somebody a job is to take them out for lunch. And watch how they interact with wait staff, right? Because that tells me a lot about what kind of person they are. But if meeting face-to-face isn't an option, well, I've got something for you. It's our sponsor, Checker. Checker provides fast and fair background checks and can help see the things we can't. In fact, I think this is something to be used in addition to taking somebody out to lunch if you have that opportunity. Checker makes it easy to get fast, comprehensive results so you can hire with confidence. Just sign up, select a package, start a background check. It's that simple. And Checker's advanced tech and proprietary data network delivers 98% of nationwide criminal checks within one hour. It's got all these built-in tools to help you stay compliant with the FCRA and local laws, and it takes the bias out. Best of all, Checker is commitment-free with affordable pay-as-you-go pricing. I love this. And it's customizable to fit your small business's needs. Take the guesswork out of the hiring process. Sign up for Checker today. Right now, Checker's offering you, our listeners, $40 off your first background check. I know. Visit our special URL today to save $40. Checker.com slash businessbrain. That's the word check and then the letter R dot com slash businessbrain. C-H-E-C-K-R dot com slash businessbrain. Checker.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Checker for sponsoring this episode. Shannon, I have to say something. Yes. This is going to, this is going to be a down year. You think so? Well, for my businesses, yes. And I was driving in the car the other day and you know, I'm an optimist. I always want to look for the good in things. I always want to spin things to being positive. Right. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. Right. Cause that's, I, I think that is one of the more common traits of entrepreneurs is like just refusing to see negatives, uh, you know, or resisting the negatives. I don't want to yeah. say refusing to see, but resisting the no, negatives. You're resisting them, but you, yeah. but you can't ignore reality, right? Well, correct. And, and yeah. I was driving in the car the other day and it hit me. I, I, I said it out loud. I'm like, this is going to be a down year. And as soon as I said it, I felt this weight lift off me because it was obvious that this is what's going to happen. Like, I, you know, with, with and I, I meant it specifically about Backbeat Media. We are an ad fueled, you know, consumer right. advertising fueled business. The economy is down. The uh, the last few years have seen what I call the silver lining of covid where because everyone was at home and not traveling online and and it's weird in our industry podcasts are considered offline advertising i know it seems crazy strange. yeah yeah whatever yeah. but podcast advertising online advertising saw huge budgets being thrown at it because it was the only place you could throw a budget right and there was a lot of money flowing into the economy too right and we were able to capture a lot of that this is not that year There's not a lot of money being thrown into the economy and there are lots of other places to get people's attention. So this year is, I agree. This year is already a down year. It is a fact. Uh, Things may change, but what I noticed in saying this is going to be a down year, like I said, that, that weight lifted off of me. And then it was like, okay, great. Now that I said this, Now I am willing to look that in the face as opposed to resisting looking at it. And instantly I started thinking about, well, if that's going to be the case, everybody else in the industry knows this too. Like this isn't our, I mean, there are things we can do to mitigate this, but the, the reason for the down year is not unique to our business. It's not quote unquote, our fault in that sense. We didn't cause it right we can do things to, uh, you know, hopefully mitigate or maybe even avoid it. 
But that was the thing is as soon as I yeah. said that, I had this freedom to start thinking about, well, okay, if it's going to be a down year, how do we do this? How do we do that? What do we change? What can we do to sort of adapt to the market? And that's where all of that inspiration uh, comes from is being free to do it as opposed to ignoring it or resisting looking at it. And th that's yeah, the I, same I think, word. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your comment about fault is really important. That's and, it. Uh, yeah. Is that I do the same thing. And I think that, you know, I have this philosophy that I've stole from somebody, you know, when you want to co compliment, look out the window, when you want to criticize, look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Right. And I always internalize this when I have down, you know, things are slower or whatever. And, and I would agree with you. All indicators in, in my businesses are it's going to be a down year as well. Uh, and one of the things that has helped me overcome this fault is I've always at, at one, some level or another, because I'm a product guy and I've always sold yeah. things, uh, yeah. always been on other marketplaces in addition to my own business, my own sure. website. Sure. So when you could look for trends, I was able to look across different platforms and see is this trending this way across these other marketplaces and not just with my business? Not just and I can me. tell you, yeah, yeah, not just me. And I can tell you for sure uh, that all these other marketplaces are being impacted as well. And oh, yeah. people are holding on to money, not as frivolous, you know, with buying luxury items. And um, so, yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think it is, it is really important to, um, to recognize that it's okay to start talking about that because it does open up opportunities and um, it becomes part of the discussion. Hey, we're just ad adapting to what's happening with a, within the economy. You haven't made a mistake that has caused your business to slow down. Right. It's not, it's not me. And even if it yeah. was, even if I had made some, or we as a business had made some critical mistake that caused that, I think that's also important to acknowledge so that you can get past it, you know, um, but I plan on sharing this with the staff too. Like, Hey, it's, it, yeah. you know, I think you already know this. So let's say it out loud. And that's one of my favorite phrases. We're just doing this to say it out loud so that we can get past it, but let's say yeah. it out loud. It's going to be a down year. Okay, great. Now we're all coming at this from the same angle what can we do? Let's be scrappy. Let's be like, let's do something crazy. We have some freedom. If we say yeah. we know there's going to be less, you know, dollars coming in this year versus last year. All right, great. Now let's have some fun with that. Like <laughs> opportunity is on the table. Let's, let's yeah, take advantage right. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Changing the way you're looking at it to where everybody isn't stressed for the next six months right. about making numbers that are, May, perhaps impossible. unrealistic. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say, say that, that's right? impossible, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> that's right. It's casual Friday. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. But yeah, I like that. And, it, and getting it out there and having that discussion is okay. How do we change? How do we adapt instead of just chasing the same thing that we know we we're not going to do? Hit? If we do the same thing yeah. we did last year, it will remain yeah. a down year. Correct, and it, correct. and there might be no world where it doesn't remain a down year. But here's the one great thing, one of, um, it's not the only, but one of the great things about admitting this to your team is you give them the freedom to share ideas that they might already have knowing that it's going to be a down year. But since you haven't said it, they don't want to be the ones to say, look, because yeah. I know it's going to be down. What do you think about changing the way we offer this? Maybe we're not lowering our prices, but you know, we've always bundled these three things together. What if we take the most valuable of those three things out of that and sell it on its own? Maybe that's a terrible idea, but yeah, it's, but you have that discussion, but have the right? conversation. Yeah. 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 Maybe you as recognizing it, maybe you could, you know, your team write up a, 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 a program, a course, a tutorial for how your customers can get maximize their ad revenue. Right. Since we all know this is that times are tough or what or what have you, giving them some something that doesn't cost anything, but you're adding value. I mean, I I can't think of a better time to to focus on loyalty. Right. Is when people are worried about, boy, we've we had X last year to spend and now we only have Y. Where do we cut? You don't want it to be your 
no uh, business, right? That's right. Yeah. So adding value in other ways could really endear you to some of these, uh, you know, companies that are going through the same things you are. So yep. it's really, it's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah. It's hard to say out loud. Like even oh, totally. as I was prepping to say it, it's like, well, I've said it to myself. Like, that's fine. And I, I said it to, uh, to Siri because I, I put the reminder on my phone. That's one of my tricks, right? When I'm driving, if I have an idea for the show or anything else, I say, Siri, at, tell, remind me either today or tomorrow, doesn't matter. It just puts it on my reminders list. Remind me tomorrow, uh, it's okay to say this is going to be a down year. It, really what I said yeah, is I like remind me tomorrow about the freedom of the optimist saying this is going to be a down year. Those are the words I said to Siri in that moment. So, yeah, man. Yeah, smart. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So how how are you, you know, if your business, if you're expecting a down year, like many in the economy, you know, out, out in the business world are, how are you responding to this? Uh, feedback at businessbrain.show. We would love to hear from you. Yeah, that's feedback at businessbrain.show. And of course, if we involve your email on the show in any way, you get added to the list for that MacBook Air. We're not going to buy you an Apple Vision Pro. Why? Because that's not coming out this year. Maybe yeah. next year. Maybe that's what we do for next year. I don't know. Maybe. You'll yeah. have to just keep listening because listening gets you a lot of things. One of the things it gets you is more tools to keep living that charmed life. And that's what we want you to do. Have a good weekend, folks. We'll see you next week. <laughs>